Lots of people talk about love. No doubt I will say things about love, which you've heard before. But maybe some younger people will hear something new, and maybe some folks a little older will get a reminder. The Apostle Paul talked about love more than other authors of the New Testament. The Holy Bible's description of love is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Lots of preachers will quote from this scripture during wedding ceremonies. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love is patient and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. There are several types of love, and actual love between humans will change over time from one type to another. Love for pets is sort of a substitute for familial love and not an issue here. Eros love is the romantic attraction between people of opposite gender, driven and started by sexual desire. Many young marriages begin with one or both husband and wife in lust rather than eros type of love. Truly lust has given way to love or else the marriage won't last more than a short time. The characteristics of love are further explained by the Apostle Paul in his letters to the Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And although I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And if I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. For whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. The love which has changed the world is called agape or God's love, the Creator's love for His human creation. This is the steadfast love explained in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that mankind could have life and have it more abundantly. His love is why He sent Jesus to suffer and die on the cross as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Praise his holy name. Familia, familial, or family love for children, siblings, parents, and other relatives. Parental love for a child is the best example of this type of love. Where is that love when a baby is killed or aborted? Satan would have us believe there's a fourth type of love, or that Eros would apply to homosexual attraction or lust for a member of the same gender. We know this is not true because of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6, love does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices in the truth. Homosexuals will say they are not evil, but normal. Their sin, like all sin, is evil because even is evil, maybe even wicked. The proof lies in the first Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. 
neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. There sure seems to be a lot of heterosexual people with loveless marriages. As followers of Jesus, we are commanded to love God with all your heart and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemy. And love your wife. It would follow that if any man is not loving his wife, then he's sinning. God hates divorce, but like adultery, it can be forgiven. God told us that immoral sex is the only acceptable reason for divorce. However, our God is a merciful God and sin can be forgiven. I have no idea how he looks at extenuating circumstances. Repenting is the solution. It is the practice of sin, continuing to commit the same sin over and over again, clearly planning the next sinful event, seems to be much more of a problem than simply taking the easy way out of a bad situation. To repent is to change direction or turn away from the sin which you have committed. If a homosexual tries to claim they are all those things listed before, we still know that it isn't true because in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6, rejoices in the truth. That doesn't mean something you call the truth, but God's truth. Single heterosexual couples living together outside of marriage are living in fornication and defeating the reasons they give for not marrying. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators will inherit the kingdom of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 10. Note that verse 11 offers hope because some of the Corinthian church were in these same conditions before they were saved.